Hello, my name is David Saxon, and today I'm going to be discussing my work with a micro cantilever based MEMS device for E. coli sensing. E. coli is a bacteria found in the guts of animals. Every year, about 270,000 people are infected with E. coli, and it results in around 100 deaths. Recently, 5,000 pounds of beef was recalled after it was discovered to be infected with E. coli. Typical lab tests for E. coli include sample incubation and analysis, which can take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. The design device is based upon a micro cantilever, which is essentially a really small diving board. The micro cantilever has gone through testing with different biomasses to determine its efficacy as a sensing unit. The micro cantilever was designed with a length of around 1,000 microns and a width of 1,000 microns. The thickness, wafer dependent, was 7 microns, 10 microns, and 15 microns. This results in a mass um, between 16 mic micrograms and 35 micrograms, cantilever mass. Um, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see the GDS file that was used to create the different photo mask levels used to fabricate this device. The first level was uh, used for implant to create the diffused resistor. The second was a back hole um, photo mask. The third was a contact cut which can't be seen because it's too small. The fourth was a metal layer and the fifth was a top hole mask. Resonant frequency is the oscillation of a structure at its natural or unforced resonance. This is a natural phenomenon that architects and civil engineers need to consider when designing a building and a phenomenon which I plan to take advantage of with this micro cantilever. The first equation can be used to calculate the frequency. Two important properties that affect this are the cantilever mass and the spring constant. Of particular interest to my project is the mass, where an additional mass will decrease the resonant frequency. For this project, the addition of the E. coli is the additional mass that will decrease the resonant frequency. The image on the top shows the oscillation of the cantilever as it vibrates. The image on the bottom shows the same cantilever with the same dimensions vibrating or oscillating at a lower frequency due to the additional mass in the form of E. coli. Covered in this slide is the calculations that are used to predict, to predict the resonant frequency. First, I had to calculate the spring constant, which is dependent upon Young's, mo Young's modulus, the width, thickness, and length of the device. I found that number to be, or I found that value to be 16.29 newtons per meter. Next, I calculated the mass, which is dependent upon the volume and density of the material. I calculated that to be 16 uh, micrograms for the uh, 7 micron thick cantilever. Finally, for distributed mass, the beam resonant frequency can be calculated using this equation, which I found to be 16, uh, about 16 kilohertz for my cantilever. E. coli is a rod-shaped bacteria which can induce vomiting, dehydration, and, extreme, and in extreme cases, death. For the purpose of the test, the strain uh, used was O6, which is not typically associated with E. coli outbreaks or death. An E. coli cell is pretty small with a length of about 2 micrometers and a mass of 2 times 10 to the negative 3 nanograms, or about two picograms, with an area of about one micron um, square per cell. On the right, you can see an image of a single cell of E. coli. In order to properly test the cantilevers with E. coli, we need to determine ways of immobilizing E. coli on the surface of the silicon. One method is to create a sandwiching of layers um, which each layer has an attraction to the layer below it. Um, the, first the first layer is uh, hydroxyl groups, which can be created um, with an oxide plasma. Next, peg biotin is used, which has a um, preference and readily bonds to hydroxyl groups. 
that leaves like a um, tag type end uh, that a antibody with the correct um, protein can capture some of that peg biotin. Um, and finally, that antibody has a preference to um, readily bind with the uh, E. coli. Um, another route is to have a direct absorption of E. coli and silicon. Um, in order to detect the E. coli on the surface of the silicon, uh, the E. coli was stained with a dye that penetrates the membrane um, and the dye fluoresces when it's um, excited at a certain wavelength. Uh, we can use this to um, ensure that E. coli is actually present as well as for uh, density calculations. This slide uh, covers the calculation of the frequency after um, E. coli has been exposed to the cantilever. So recall that E. coli is pretty small with a mass of about um, 2 picograms and 1 uh, micron square per um, cell. The cantilever dimensions uh, has an area of about um, 1 times 10 to the 6 square microns and so when we assume 100% uh, coverage in a single layer, you, we get a uh, density of 1 million cells, which equates to a, um, an ama which equates to a mass of 2 micrograms. Um, this, adding this mass um, to the cantilever, we get a total mass of 18 micrograms. Uh, we can then plug that back into the same equation and uh, see a shift from 16.01 uh, kilohertz down to 15.14 kilohertz, which is almost a 0.9 kilohertz difference or a 5.43% shift. Um, there are a couple assumptions with these calculations mainly assuming uh, complete coverage of E. coli on the cantilever surface, as well as um, no partial cells and no dampening effects due to uh, air or atmosphere um, that the cantilever is operating within. To fabricate the micro cantilever, a bulk MEMS process flow was designed. This fabrication process flow consisted of over 50 uh, fabrication steps and utilized five different photolithography mats. The process flow was carried out on three uh, wafers um, that have a buried oxide layer in them. Um, this means that there is silicon on oxide or SOI wafers. Uh, so this top layer of silicon will actually be what the cantilever is formed um, with. The uh, um, oxide is important because it, act it acts as an etch stop for the front and the back hull um, silicon etches. Ultimately the fabrication was not completed and the image on the left shows the current standing of the process flow where they um, still need to have the back hole etched, the front hole etched to release the cantilevers, as well as um, etching of this buried oxide layer. Early on, the reactive ion etcher appeared to be a favorite due to its straight sidewalls and deep etching capabilities. However, the tool went down in early fall and time constraints with parts, recharacterizations, etc made it not realistic for this process. Therefore, we opted for KOH for its uh, bulk silicon etching um, reliability. One aspect to remember with KOH etching is that it etches along the 100 crystal planes, leaving a um, angled sidewall effect. This angled sidewall effect had to be uh, factored in when designing the mask, which is why the purple layer, which was the back hole photo mask, 
um, is much larger than the white. It needs to be set back about 300 microns um, in order to provide the correct dimensions. Um, for KOH, we needed to protect the front side of the wafers as it's a wet etch, um, and so we determined a uh, etch protectant, alkaline etch protectant called Protec. Unfortunately, Protect had a long week lead time, a long lead time of around nine weeks, and would not um, arrive in time to complete fabrication. Therefore, for testing purposes, I was provided similar cantilevers uh, or cantilevers with similar dimensions um, that had been previously completed by Dr. Pachades. The main difference in the dimensions between um, the design cantilevers and the previously fabricated cantilevers is the width being 800 microns versus the design of 1,000 and a thickness of 20 microns um, as opposed to the design 7, 10, or 15, as well as having this bulk mass on the uh, end of the cantilevers. Um, this ultimately increases the mass of the cantilever um, up to 26 micrograms and uh, in this table the different uh, measured resistor values can be seen as well as the calculated frequency which should be the same for um, all of the cantilevers um, versus the measured frequency. Um, again the difference in frequency can be equated to uh, difference in mass or spring constants um, which can vary from cantilever to cantilever. To test the uh, cantilevers they needed to be packaged. Uh, to package them the cantilevers were placed on a PCV board and bonded with an epoxy. Um, wires were bonded using ultrasonic um, techniques from the resistor um, to the PCB board and then uh, leads were soldered onto the PCB. Um, in addition to that, the uh, whole package was placed on a piezoelectric disc which acts as a sh shaker table vibrating the um, entire chip and the cantilever as well. Different biological solutions were tested in order to maximize the binding density of E. coli and silicon. E. coli directly absorbed on silicon provided the highest cell density per area with about 5,000 cells per one square millimeter. A big difference from the assumed capacity of a million cells per square centimeter. With further development, it's expected that the cell density could be greatly increased. The test setup was relatively simple. A waveform generator was used to impulse the piezoelectric disc. A simple voltage division, division circuit was created with the sensor acting as one of the resistors, which will change over time um, depending on the impulse, uh, which can be monitored um, with an oscilloscope and uh, plotted. Uh, channel 1 um, plots the impulse response where channel 2 plots the impulse from the waveform generator. The piezoelectric discs were pulsed at one second intervals. The cantilever impulse response is recorded and plotted on the oscilloscope. From this plot, the resonant frequency can be term determined by taking a value from peak to peak. Additionally, the Q factor can also be determined by taking the ratio of the input energy over the energy loss in one cycle. One milliliter of a PVS phosphate buffered saline solution was mixed with E. coli. 500 nanoliters of this was dispensed onto two cantilevers and dried. After, watching, after washing with nucleus free water and drying again, the samples were observed under fluorescent microscopy. During this uh, mic microscopy, large striations were seen that resembled 
uh, crystal-like formations, similar to water crystal forming, water crystals forming with frost. Likely these are salt crystals forming under the saline solution. Once formed, the E. coli is binding to these crystals as opposed to the silicon surface. The same procedure um, as previously developed was followed with the addition of newly incubated uh, E. coli. Further investigation needs to be completed to determine the cause of these crystal formations. The two cantilevers were tested with the presence of E. coli and without the presence of E. coli. Both cantilevers showed an increased resonant frequency after the E. coli was dispensed. The likely cause of this is the fact that the crystal-like formations of the E. coli stiffen the cantilever, leading to a higher spring constant. To verify that a mass will decrease the frequency 500 nanoliters of a microbead solution, 10 micron diameter silica beads was dispensed on the cantilever surface. Once dried, that cantilever was tested again. We moved from a black peak to a red peak due to the higher spring constant uh, caused by the salt crystal E. coli film um, and then down to a blue peak which is a lower frequency caused by the combination um, mass of E. coli and the mass of the microbeads. The green curve rep represents what would be the expected uh, frequency post E. coli exposure. Manually dispensing nanovolumes of solution onto the cantilevers was difficult and resulted in a broken cantilever. Next steps are to finish processing the original cantilevers and to develop a protocol for uh, E. coli binding using antibodies to increase the surface density. To conclude, a MEMS micro cantilever device was evaluated as an E. coli sensor. The resonant frequency shifted in the opposite manner than anticipated once it was exposed to the E. coli solution. The stiff salt crystal slash E. coli film caused the higher resonant frequency due to a stiffer spring constant. When microbeads were dispensed on the surface, the frequency went down as expected. Theory holds true that a larger mass will result in a lower resonant frequency. With future work, it's likely that a micro cantilever could be used to sense E. coli. I want to thank everyone who helped me along the way this past year. I wouldn't have been as successful as I was without the guidance and advisement of Dr. Pachades and Dr. Dew, as well as Dr. Pearson. I want to thank the senior design class for their input, assistance, and support on this project. I am indebted to each of you. Additionally, I want to thank the 3N Lab Group, notably Mengi, Jingye, and Grant for their assistance, guidance, and patience as they helped me through the biology aspect of the project. And finally, I want to thank everyone who helped me in the clean room with processing. Venki, Will, VJ, and the entire SFML staff.